Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Energy regulator NERSA is in for a busy period after making a determination on the format ESCOM's upcoming tariff application should take. Terence Creamer joins me to talk about what's on the agenda. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. NERSA refused an ESCOM request for it to condone a deviation from the tariff methodology and in providing information in the stipulated format. Yes, this, is, uh, this was a sort of long winded process where Eskom, in making its tariff application for 2018-2019, we know that the th uh, third multi-year price determination path comes to an end next year. Uh, that was where Eskom got five, um, eight percent a year increases, uh, having asked for 16 percent at the, uh, all those years b right back, about six years ago. And uh, during that period, there have also been some RCA applications so we saw in some years Eskom got more than the 8% it asked. And then last year, or this year, it got 2.2% because of um, the, the base having been adjusted from those RCA applications. And it now is going to be seeking a, a nearly 20% increase for 2018-2019 in a bid to recover um, both from the 2.2% that they got this year as well as from the fact that they haven't actually been able to submit RCA applications because there's been a court or legal action around that which led to some uncertainty about how RCA should be, the regulatory clearing accounts should be used. So now we're in a position where Eskom also ha um, has to submit under a new, newly revised um, MYPD uh, methodology and uh, in so doing they sent a letter to Esk uh, NERSA earlier in the year to say we actually can't meet the criteria or the format that you want us to uh, to meet, and therefore would like you to condone a deviation from that. Now that uh, met with the opposition um, uh, from business and from society, which said, you know, Eskom is trying to ask for really very high increases with on an unjustifiable basis. They're not giving us full transparency um, in terms of what uh, the regulator is demanding, and uh, NERSA should therefore refuse that request. And in the main. Um, last week uh, the, the regulator has refused to condone any deviation but it has also in the process given guidance where Eskom said it couldn't meet certain conditions or certain information uh, requirements around its coal burn and the coal material handling costs it's given guidance on how that should be dealt with uh, so Eskom um, has uh, has now been given its marching orders and uh, we'll see now what, what will happen with its, with its one year tariff application. So what will happen now? Well I think Eskom has agreed that it will, uh, you know, uh, regulators given it 30 days to comply and Eskom has agreed that it will comply uh, and has noted the guidance that Eskom, uh, that NERSA, uh, NERSA has given it in terms of the application. So I think in the next couple of weeks the application will be submitted in the format uh, requested by the regulator. I'm sure people will pour, uh, pour over it to make sure that it does indeed meet uh, uh, nurses requirements. Uh, this is at a time when you know Eskom's finance director uh, is, has been put on, on leave owing to the corruption allegations at the organizations and a few other senior uh, managers uh, have also been put on leave. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, whether Eskom has the personnel uh, to carry this through but I think it is a, a large organization and uh, does have expertise that are quite deep and its acting finance director will have to take up the mantle and submit uh, to um, nurses requirements. Can South Africa really afford another double digit tariff increase? Well that's, uh, that's really the big question now. I think um, as we, as we know, uh, since 2006, we've been receiving really uh, some substantial tariff increases uh, year after year, and the tariff is now, uh, you know, 200% uh, above, or it's much more than double where it was back in 2006 in real terms. And we've really reached, I think, something of a tipping point around whether industries can actually, uh, buy, uh, you know, feed into or can absorb uh, Eskom's price path and as determined by the tariff methodology. So uh, Eskom applies for a revenue requirement. That revenue requirement is based both on what the expected uh, de demand or consumption will be as well as what its costs will be in meeting that, um, that uh, demand. 
and what Eskom has been did in its last applications, and probably you know it did it, you know there was no malice, but it had overestimated uh, demand uh, and consumption, and that always meant that it was under recovering in terms of the methodology, and uh, it was and and because it has been unable to uh, recover through the RCA mechanism. That means there's, a, there's this large gap, and they've now applied for nearly 20% for a single year because of the, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty around uh, ESKIM and the tariff application. They felt uh, it was better to just apply for a single year rather than go into another multi-year period uh, where we could have a, a number of um, adjustments that would have to be made. But I think there's going to be a major pushback um, against a 20% type of tariff from Eskom industry uh, is under serious pressure at the moment. Uh, we can see it in the statistics. Jobs are under pressure in, in, um, in the mining and the energy intensive factory type space. And uh, I think that uh, also households are under pressure. And we see it in the economy we in a recession. Um, we, we are not nearly growing at the level that is needed to create jobs. And um, you know something almost has to give here, and it's going to be uh, really difficult uh, for the regulator to meet this balancing act once again. It's it's going to be uh, a lot of pressure or a lot of pushback once Eskom finalises this tariff application, and we can uh, I think I think also in the context of the amount of corruption allegations surrounding Eskom that's, that's swirling still, and there isn't really certainty. Here that the uh, governance is really in place at, at, the at the utility, I think the pushback is going to be more vicious than ever. And uh, I think we're going to be in for some very lively public hearings. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.